All right, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Alpha Obasins channel, where in our last tutorial, we addressed how to install Arch Linux on a virtual machine via VMware. In today's video, I'm going to take you guys through how to customize your desktop environment via KDE Plasma as we installed in the last tutorial. KDE Plasma is the most Windows-like desktop environment that you're gonna find, in my opinion, uh, on Linux. And it's incredibly powerful. It's, it's like Windows on steroids when it comes to customization because you can change everything. The color of your windows, the color of your taskbar, the icons, the translucency. You can add animations to the opening and closing of your windows. All of this is built into the desktop environment. It's something that you can change at the click of a button. You don't have to go through all of these configuration files and get all hacker on your computer in order to change basic settings. So without further ado, let's go ahead and transition into my virtual machine here where you can tell that I have changed a few things from the last time you've seen it. And I'm gonna jump straight into it. We're gonna make this quick. I'm gonna brush over a lot of options and I'm just gonna simply encourage you to observe how I'm navigating these menus and then go about and taking it upon yourself to more or less analyze each of the options. I understand it can look overwhelming, but it's literally just a menu and all you gotta do is read and it will tell you exactly what each option does. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and right click on our desktop environment and select configure display settings. On the left hand side, you're gonna go all the way to the top where it says appearance. Now, this is the global theme option. If you go down to the bottom right hand, you're gonna see get new global themes. Uh, go ahead and select that and maximize the window. On the top right, you will see recent. Click that and select most downloaded first. Typically, the most downloaded themes are going to be the most complete. It's going to have the most resources to install onto your system that all match. And installing a global theme is as simple as just finding one that you like and selecting install. Once you click that, uh, it may or may not ask you for your password, depending on whether it's going to modify your login screen, which on KDE Plasma is typically by default going to be SDDM. Uh, if it does not ask for your password, great. If it does, just know that it's just changing something like your login screen or something similar. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close that. If you uh, want to, you can select any of the options or download your global theme of choice. Or if you would prefer to kind of DIY, kind of mix and match certain resources, you can select each of these options within the global theme and choose them independently, whether it's your application style, the way that your windows look, your plasma style, the way that your widgets look, your color scheme. You want to make your own color scheme? Click the custom option. You want to set your wallpaper and have it choose your color scheme based on your background? Go ahead and select from current wallpaper. You want to just find something different? Go to the bottom right and select get new color schemes. Uh, window decorations, that's the minimize, maximize, and close buttons at the top. You know, you can change all of those. Don't see something you like? Get more window decorations. Uh, fonts. Fonts is uh, just as easy as Windows when it comes to installing them. You go to something like dafont.com, that's D-A-Font.com. You download whatever you like, whether it's cursive fonts, cartoony fonts, and traditional fonts, whatever the case. You find something that you like, you select download, it downloads to your computer, you open up your Dolphin, uh, this window here, your file explorer, and you navigate to downloads and you will find your uh, your font download here you will right click on it scroll down to the bottom of the menu where it says extract here or extract and then you simply extract it at this location and there you will see your font file double click on it it'll bring up a new window with all of the different sizes and so on and so forth click install and you can choose whether you're going to install it for just your user or if you want to install it system wide so that it's available for everybody and everything on the system Upon completing that, your, your font is installed. You can choose whatever you want. As you can see, I have adjusted all fonts. I selected font. I chose my installed forced square font from Defont. I selected size and set to 12. I clicked OK. I clicked apply. And now the system-wide 
font that is used for all the text and dialogue is now Forest Square. That's one of my favorite fonts. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on down to icons. You can choose your, your choice of icons. You want something super fruity, tooty colored or, you know, kind of green or white or blue or whatever you name it. Again, if you don't find something that appeals to you, go to get new icons to download more. And the same goes for cursors. You can change your cursors down on the bottom left. You can change cursor size, make them bigger, smaller, so on and so forth. Again, more font management options. Uh, this one right here is a splash screen. So when you log in, you enter your password at the login screen. There is a period where your computer loads up the desktop environment. And between that transition is a loading screen. You want to look at an art screen? Cool. You want to look at a cute cat while you're logging in, put you in a good mood? Cool. Go ahead and do as you will. You don't see animations that you like? Again, get new. This one, for strangely enough, is at the top right of the screen. Select get new, maximize the window, select most downloaded first, and you'll see the most polished animations that there are. And as you can see, they get pretty wild. There's a lot of different login animations to kind of customize it, make it feel as you would like it to. We're going to go ahead and close that. And boot, boot splash screen is the same thing. In theory, it's supposed to be an animation when you actually start your computer and it's powering up. I've found that this doesn't always work, at least on my system. And truth be told, it's probably a configuration that I have neglected to acknowledge as to why it doesn't work. Next, we're going to go over to the workspace area on the left hand side and select workspace behavior. Now, by default, KDE Plasma, if I recall, sets the clicking files or folders to opens them. Meaning when you click a file or you click a folder one time, it will open that file or open that directory. Most people, especially if you're coming from Windows, are used to having to double click something in order to open it or navigate to its directory. So in order to replicate that experience, something that you're used to, uh, go ahead and tick this little circle here that says selects them open by double clicking instead select apply and now you will have that more uh, traditional uh, experience when it comes to opening uh, files and folders excuse me and navigating your desktop environment uh, next we're going to go to desktop effects you may notice when i open and close my windows i have sort of a a uh, glitchy sort of animation that comes when I open these these folders and close them. Uh, I encourage you when you select desktop effects to take some time when you get the chance to read every single one of these options because there is an immaculate amount of visual uh, animations and aesthetic options to really customize how your your desktop looks. And I understand that some people may not be into that sort of thing, and that's more power to you. But as an artist, my computer, my desktop environment, I spend so much time behind it. It's a lot like being down in my man cave. If this was just a room with brick walls and nothing else, I would feel depressed. I would feel isolated. I would feel trapped in a space that I can't get out of. And very much the same is my desktop environment. It has to look and feel and be organized and function the way that I want it to to make me feel good about using the technology. It's, it's, that's the best way that I can kind of provide that analogy uh, to let you guys know why I take this stuff so passionately and I enjoy it so much. So that being said, definitely read all of these animation options. Check them out. You've got like translucency when you, if you want your windows to be transparent, you kind of want your background to, to shine through when you're not using a window, you can do that. Wobbly windows, if you enable that, it'll make your windows wobble around when you move them. You can change how much they wobble around, how little they wobble around, how much drag, so on and so forth. Magic lamp makes it look like, you know, a genie coming out of a bottle when you open a window. Like there's a limitless amount of, of options here. But what I want to address is the burn my windows. I, I got to I got to do a little promo here for this individual because last year they ported over from the GNOME desktop environment all of the burn my windows uh, animations that are available on GNOME desktop, which is an entirely different animal in terms of desktop environment. But now we have these options on 
KDE Plasma. And I've got them all downloaded here, but just to show you a few, let's say we select pixel wheel, I select apply. Now when I open a window, I get a pixel wheel. When I close a window, pixel wheel. Pretty cool animation. Maybe I like Rick and Morty. I really do like Rick and Morty. I've got a calendar right there, thanks to my wife. So I select Rick and, or excuse me, I select the portal and click apply. And now when I open windows, I've got a Rick and Morty portal. Uh, my personal favorite, hands down, is going to be the hexagon option. When I open up my windows, it gives me kind of a honeycomb hexagon look to my windows. So go ahead and play with that. If you want to burn my windows, you go to get new desktop effects. You maximize the window. Type in the search bar, burn, whoops, excuse me, it helps to actually be on there. Burn my windows and press enter. Upon doing so, you will get all of the burn my windows options and there are a lot of them now that i've got them all installed i have access to all of these different options as to how my windows open and close to give me a little extra eye candy all right i'm going to brush through a few more options here i see we're getting off into 13 minutes and i'd like to not keep you around all day so screen edges uh, is if you move a mouse into any of the top corners or the middle of your screen anywhere you can select what it does in terms of if there's a response. So let's say I wanted to drag my mouse to the top left of the screen and have it lock my screen. I could select this option, click apply, and now when I drag my mouse to the far top left corner, it will lock my screen just automatically as soon as it senses my mouse. Uh, the same goes for touch screen excuse me, gestures if you've got a touchscreen laptop or whatever. Um, it's the same exact concept. You've got options here that you can choose that if you touch, swipe, whatever, it'll do this. Uh, screen locking. This is where you change your like lock screen wallpaper and so on and so forth. You can choose whatever you want here and set it and call it good. Uh, virtual desktops. For now, I'm going to encourage people not to worry about virtual desktops. If you feel that you need more real estate, say you want on a laptop and you don't have multiple monitors and your screen's getting cluttered up because you've got so many different things open at the same time, but they can sort of be organized by having multiple monitors, I would encourage you to go to activities. Go ahead and create a new activity, name it whatever you want. Maybe you've got like gaming and schoolwork or something. And you go ahead and click create. You can see here I've got the default and the gaming. So when I press the Windows key and tab, now I can cycle through multiple activities. And you can have as many as you want. And essentially this is just a virtual desktop that allows you to organize your space more effectively. Again, uh, you can go to recent files and you can either choose to keep history, clear history. I typically set it for one month and then do not remember because I don't really have a use for this. Uh, recent files, unless you're doing like systems administration or something, most of your files are going to be in the same place. Your pictures are going to be in pictures. Your music's going to be in music. Your documents are going to be in documents. Like it's pretty easy to find your files. Uh, you're not searching for any crazy configuration files or anything like that. So... Uh, this is typically what I do for the general user that's not a systems administrator for some big corporation. Um, so that being said, guys, I, I think that's really it. You kind of get where I'm going here. I encourage you to go through, just go down the line, check out Window Manager, see what your options are. You can create shortcuts if you want to push a certain key combination and say have your browser pop up. Uh, for example, on mine, if I press Control-1, Dolphin pops up, my File Explorer. If I press Control-2, Firefox pops up. If it's Control-Title key, uh, my Terminal pops up. Like you, This is where you would customize that through shortcuts. Uh, you can create custom shortcuts. So say you go to Edit, click New, Global Shortcut, Command, URL. One of the most common things that I do is I make an X-Kill Global Command. Um, I click on it, I select the trigger, uh, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, control alt delete, I will reassign so it works, Whoop. for whatever reason it didn't work, so there we go, control alt delete is my shortcut and then my command and URL is X kill, so when I click apply, now when I press control alt delete, it brings up apparently not what I wanted it to, should bring up a little skull icon and whatever you click at that point, you will 
terminate it. It's essentially like ending something with Windows Task Manager. Um, so that's what I do there. Uh, start up and shut down is another big one that I like to share with you guys. Uh, if you go to the bottom right and select get new SDDM themes, this is your login screen. This is what your login window looks like when you first get in here. So I'm going to select most downloaded first. My favorite is hands down sugar candy with this one right here. I select install. At some point, like right now, it's going to ask me for my password. I'm going to press enter. It is now installed. I'm going to close it. I'm going to select sugar candy down here and select apply. It's going to ask for my password again. I'm going to input that. And now when I log in, this is the screen that I will see. And just like that, my login screen has changed. So entering my password here, we'll get back in. Now, a bit of a disclaimer here because I have a love-hate relationship with the Linux community. On one hand, we've got a lot of revolutionary individuals, people like this guy that are making and porting over these incredible animations to really give our, uh, our desktop environments that extra edge to make them feel like our own. But then you've got the old hats that are like, oh my God, that's a waste of resources. Oh my God, why would you do that? It, it is just such a waste of resources, man. And they, they go on this big tangent about how all this stuff is, is stupid and, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. They don't like it. It's obvious. But here's the thing, guys, and this is my argument. We don't operate on computers that are essentially calculators. It's not the 1990s anymore, y'all. We have ample, like, a, a absolute sufficient amount of resources. Even if you've got a basic computer, you go buy you a pre-built computer from Best Buy, you're going to have at least 8 gigs of RAM. You're going to have uh, a GPU to render these visuals. Like, it, it, back, back in the day, yeah, when we had 512 megabytes worth of RAM, yeah, you had to be a little conscious about how much you workload you put on your system. But, in contrast to from then to today, the hardware is so beyond advanced from what they had back then that it is it requires next to nothing of your resources to implement things like these simple animations, these transitions, and so on and so forth to customize your desktop. So if you're just getting into Linux and you start talking about these sort of things, don't let these kinds of people drag you down if you like it if you like the way it looks and it's not slowing your system down which odds are it's not going to <laughs> just do it forget what the other guys say so now you get a general idea how to customize your desktop without too much hassle you don't have to go into configuration files it's simply just scrolling through some menus doing a little light reading and making it your own so with any luck you learned something, we'll catch you in the next one. Before I leave, right click on this desktop and select enter edit mode and now you can change the size of your taskbar, any of these widgets that you have down at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one in half, 30, so now my taskbar is smaller. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, add widgets and here you go, a million widgets that you can add to your desktop environment. Let's say you wanted to, I'm going to go and add my favorite one. So we're going to get new widgets, download new widgets. I am going to maximize and type aesthetic. Press enter and I'm going to install the aesthetic clock. Once that's complete, I will go to add widgets, type in aesthetic. Once I click on it, I will now have a clock on my screen that appeals to me now if I go to this little menu here and select configure aesthetic clock I can scroll down use colors from current color scheme I am going to disable system monitor and now playing and there we go we now have a neat little clock get rid of this one by selecting remove and there you go I just made a little bit more custom desktop. That being said, now I'm really going to let you go. Have fun, guys. If you have any questions, drop the comments down below. I appreciate it, and I'd be glad to help.